What's up guys? Daybreak here coming back at you guys with a massive haul video. Yes, as you guys will see very, very soon, this haul has literally everything that I collect. Uh, if you guys are into anime figures, if you're into SH Figure Arts, Dragon Ball Z figures, if you're into Lightning Collection, if you're into Retro Games, if you're into Hasbro Marvel Legends, if you're into Pokemon cards, Vi Shorts cards, this haul has literally everything and I'm kind of afraid the stack here, you see, it's shaking. It's kind of wild. Uh, so yeah, it, this is going to have a little bit of everything for you guys. So the way I'm going to do it this first time around is as follows. I'm going to be doing a, oh, I guess, one big haul. And I want you guys, I want some feedback. So once you watch this video, if you like what you saw, just tell me, hey, keep it as it is. If you are not into it because there's just so many other parts that you don't really care for, then let me know. Because if that's the case, I could split up these videos. So I will do like a Pokemon haul. I will do a, I don't know, an anime figure haul, etc. cetera. Uh, those kind of things I don't mind doing uh, because they're just fun. Or I could just do one haul like this, but I could just keep hitting the stop record button and restart. It's not a big deal. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. In the, I guess, the description box, I'm going to be providing a timestamp. So if you're like, oh, Daybreak, this is miserable. I can't watch all this crap on Pokemon cards. I don't care about it. Okay, then let me know in the comment section and you can go to the the description box and you can go to whatever you want to watch so with that said here we go today i'm going to literally showcase everything that i picked up over the past i would say three months maybe even a little bit more because this is everything i picked up since i've been away on youtube uh, i want to start there and then i kind of work my way forward because yeah it's a lot of stuff so we're going to first start things off with, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, we'll start with this one. Uh, very recently, I was able to obtain a holy grail of mine. Oh, I almost showed it. Oh, whatever. It is the BAM Sun, the original red version for the basic Game Boy. And this is none other than Pokemon. Uh, as a kid growing up in the 90s, this is what everyone wanted. The red version or the blue version, those are the only two options we got here in the States. And I remember getting this game and it was freaking glorious. And you know what? People say like games are not life changing, but this game was life changing. As a matter of fact, 30 years later or 20 years later now, uh, I'm still into the franchise and it's kind of wild how far Pokemon has come. But yeah, this is the original. Now it's not sealed. It does have this beautiful like plastic covering to keep it safe. But yeah, it's not sealed, it has been open. I looked inside uh, in the contents, the booklet that you got with this game. It's immaculate, no rips, no dings, no whitening. So that's awesome. You also have like a little pamphlets for the power, like it was like a magazine that you could subscribe for. That's in here. And the actual game was in that like plastic baggie. I'm not sure if the game works, but uh, yeah, it's it's pretty freaking dope. Uh, as a adult collector, I knew I had to pick, uh, pick up this retro game because this was such a big, I guess, thing for me uh, as a kid. So there you go. Ba-bam. Now, I'm going to put this back over here so I don't damage this. It is part of my display here, and it looks freaking glorious. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about sticking with Pokemon. Let's just go in order. So, uh, as you guys know, I am a big fan of the Pokemon franchise and everything. The games, the cards, etc. And so... This right here is the recently released uh, Illustrator card uh, where a lot of different people submitted drawings and it was like a competition. And the winner got their, their artwork created into a Pokemon card. 
And I thought this card right here was absolutely gorgeous. I love, first of all, Charizard is not my main favorite Pokemon, but I mean, look at that. That is freaking amazing. Now, the only gripe I have with this particular card is the fact that it's not hollow. If this was hollow, my God, this would be so freaking mind blowing. But it isn't, unfortunately. But look at it. I love how Charizard's just ready for battle here. And you see the stadium packed with people. And it just looks freaking dope. I had to pick up four copies. And as you guys can clearly see, it's already in the card saver ones. I'm going to get these graded by PSA. And hopefully, we'll get some PSA 10s. So that's something to look out for. Okay. Speaking of PSA cards, recently I picked up these two. This one right here, it is the Easter Pikachu. I wish there was like a Christmas Pikachu because that would fit more of the theme of this month. But yeah, um, I didn't own this card as a PSA 10. So I was looking around and I found one uh, for a decent price. All of these cards have skyrocketed in price these last couple of months. But found this one for a good deal. So I scooped it up. Uh, this is going into my collection. The PSA 9 version that I have of this card, I actually recently sold because I was like, I have a PSA 10, I don't really need a PSA 9. So that helped me pay for this particular purchase. So freaking adorable. Look at that. Oh, I love it. Okay. Up next is another PSA card, and it is none other than Entei from... The, what, 2001, I think it was, movie. And my gosh, I remember owning this card. And I remember going to the movies with uh, my, I think it was my cousins at the time. Um, and yeah, we got one of these when you went to go, uh, when you purchased the ticket. And it was so dope getting this Entei card. So as an adult collector now, who doesn't own that Entei card. And even if I did, it would probably be just crap at this point because as a kid, no one put it in top loaders or anything like that. We may, if at best, we would have put it in like one of those, the pages for the binders. But other than that, we played with this ish. So yeah, I love the fact that I was able to pick this one up. Oh, look at that swirl. But yeah, it's the Entei promo card and it's from Pokemon, uh, I think, Movie 3, and it's a PSA 10. So pretty freaking exciting. Okay, so for those of you guys who are like, oh, I don't want to hear about Pokemon, we're done. I promise you with Pokemon for now. So I guess let's finish up with the cards and then we'll move on to this awesome shaky stack right over here. So going with Vice Shorts. I told you guys in my previous video that I, I am still collecting Vice Shorts, I'm still playing the game, uh, but I'm now just building decks and I'm buying like play sets instead of purchasing the actual booster, like the booster boxes. Uh, I might pick up one or two, but I'm gonna stick to that rule and just buy what I want. So this set came out recently in Japanese. And for those of you guys who don't know, this is like a very uh, comedic version of an MMO game, and it's called Bofuri. I think that's how you pronounce it. And essentially what this story is all about is her friend, what's her name? Sally. So Sally is a huge MMO player, and uh, she asked her friend Maple to come join her into this new fantasy world game that was happening. So Maple came in not really knowing much about MMOs or whatnot and decided, hey, I don't really like feeling pain. So I'm going to max out on vitality, health, defense, all that stuff. And because she did that, she became such a broken character that it was just really funny. It was a new player uh, making a ridiculous statement of jacking up just one area of their character and it paying off. And it's just, it's literally a comedy. It's very lighthearted, nothing too crazy. But I had to pick up 
uh, I had to build a deck for this particular set because I really enjoyed it. It wasn't uh, it wasn't serious at all. So if you're looking for an MMO type of anime and you were like when when you saw Bofuri come out the first time, you were probably like, oh, it's probably just a knockoff of Lock Her uh, not Lock Horizon um, Shield Hero. It kind of is because they both use shields, but this one is super lighthearted and I think you'll enjoy. So had to pick up this. Now, where did I pick this one up? Uh, I actually picked this one up from a seller on a Facebook Facebook group that I'm a part of when it comes to Vice Shorts. And he has a website. Uh, he's out in Singapore, I think it is. And it's called sliverqueen.com. Uh, he is pretty freaking awesome to deal with. Um, he's very, uh, yeah, his cu the customer service is perfect. He even sent these in, do I have it still here? Yeah, in new, these are all new. You can even feel it. These have never been played for sure. But Jojo sleeves, now I personally don't like Jojo. So I took them out of these sleeves and I'm more into just your basic, um, ultra pro or dragon shield sleeves so i put it in there already but yeah he was super chill mm, shipping was a little expensive but that's because of the whole covid situation and uh, the only thing that will come to us from singapore is dhl and if you know anything about um i guess shipping services dhl is crazy expensive it was like 20 something dollars 25 dollars to get this stack sent to me but that's not his fault that's obviously uh with the whole covid situation that's that's acceptable so yeah pick this one up from sliverqueen.com if you guys like both footy or if you like any other sets definitely go check him out i'll leave his link down there okay up next i got me an sp card and it is of Yoshino from Date Alive. She is one of my favorite characters from Date Alive, if not my favorite. I just loved her uh, her design, and yeah, it was just a beautiful signed card. Um, I have a figure version of this, so I kind of want to display it with the actual figure. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that here, but I'm definitely gonna try. But looks freaking dope. And I kind of want a Toka SP, but that's kind of on the low end of my wants right now. So I'm pretty glad to have this one, and I'm pretty content for now. Okay, so for those of you guys who are only into like the cards, we're done. You guys can go. For the rest of us, we have a lot of crap to discuss. You ready? So I'm going to start things off with... Oh my god. Don't want to drop any of these. But bam it is Lord Dracon, and I'm pretty sure I showcased this box in one of my, I guess, uh, vlog videos or whatnot, but my god, this is a beautiful figure. Now, you might be like, Daybreak, are you not going to open it? Yeah, this one I'm actually going to keep in package because the paint job, everything looks pretty on point. And uh, very recently, I'm not sure if it's still up, but if it is, I will uh, tell you guys in the description box down below. Uh, Hasbro put this guy back up on pre-order and so I pre-ordered this guy again so now I'm gonna have two so one I'm gonna have displayed in the box like this and then the other one uh, or whichever one has the better paint job I'm gonna keep inside and then the other one I'm going to crack open and I'm gonna display because my god you guys see like, those damaged helmets you see Saba in the corner right there, Dragon Dagger, and all the other be Is that a Dragon Dagger? I don't think so. No, it's not a Dragon da Dagger. I lied. Yeah, but my gosh, this looks freaking epic. Love what Hasbro's doing with the Lightning Collection. Yeah, I do have my little minor nitpicks here and there, but pretty freaking solid. I love it. Now, um, I do have... King Sphinx and uh, what was the pumpkin guy's uh, name? The villain. Ugh, I don't remember. But yeah, I do have them on pre-order. I have the Astronema and In Space Red 2-pack on pre-order as well. So whenever I get them, I'll showcase them to you. 
Okay, sticking with the Hasbro theme, I got these two already out of the packaging. And I gotta say, I'm so happy we got a new Pyro figure. This one blows the other, like, Toy Biz one, or Toy Biz Marvel Legends one out of the water. I just, it's awesome. Now, hopefully, crossing my fingers, we get a Toad and maybe a Build-A-Figure, um, what's it called? Um, Blob figure? That would be freaking dope. Our Brotherhood of Mutants team would be pretty much rock solid. So yeah, now the only minor complaint I have with this particular pyro figure is not the figure itself. I have a problem with its freaking accessory. Let me see if I can get it. Now I understand why Hasbro did this, but Hasbro gave us this. Now, I am positive pyro cannot manipulate, oh, he cannot actually create fire from like his fists. That's why he has this little doohickey here that creates the fire and he can kind of manipulate the fire and bend it to his will. So I wish they gave him not this, but maybe a new flame effect piece. That would have been freaking dope. Uh, or maybe a, a flame effect piece that you can plug in here because it does look like there was it was made so that something could peg in. But I tried pegging this one in and it just doesn't stay which really sucks. But hopefully uh, they will come out with another figure that might have a flame effect piece that we can utilize here because that would be dope. But yeah, other than that, no complaints. This is a solid, solid release from Hasbro for the Marvel Legends lineup. Now this rogue figure, I was never really a fan of this costume here. So it's all right. Um, yeah, it's just all right. It's just another rogue figure, and uh, I'm I'm happy with it, but it is what it is. I wish they gave us Toad instead. I mean, that would have been awesome. Getting, like, a Pyro and Toad, or maybe Avalanche, that would have been pretty dope, too. But, yeah, we got another rogue, different costume, so, yeah, we could set some more teams up, but, yeah. And honestly, face sculpt, I mean, what do you guys think? I'm not really a fan of the face sculpt, to be honest. But yeah, that's that. Okay, so Hasbro stuff, done. Now let's move on to the SH Figure Arts stuff. Yeah, that's the way to go. SH Figure Arts picked up the, um, it's already out of the package, guys. It's the K.O. Ken Son Goku. It's the uh, updated version of that. Uh, it was an exclusive figure at the time. It was held in like New York. It was like the world tour for the Dragon Ball line when it first started. And that figure was using the old mold. So this one's the new mold. And I gotta say, I really like this one a lot. It's already in my display cabinet with the Frieza. Uh, and yeah, it looks great. Um, it's dope. I like it. So nothing more to really say about that. All right, sticking to more Dragon Ball stuff from SH Figure Arts. Bam! I love these stands. Uh, when this originally came out, it was during like a Hong Kong um, world tour, once again, uh, event. Uh, I saw it and I really wanted it, but I did not want to pay like a hundred something dollars that the secondary market was commanding. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna hold off and hope and pray that this comes out in the US. And sure enough, it did. I still haven't cracked this thing open because honestly, I'm not really sure how I want to do my display right now for the SH Figures Dragon Ball Z line. But once I do figure it out, I will definitely be using these. I think if, yeah, I think I'm going to use these with like the Dragon Ball line because that's where all the, the Dragon Balls are coming out from. Maybe, maybe. So that's that. Okay. Three more figures when it comes to the Dragon Ball line. We have the convention exclusive. What is this? The uh, Ultra Instinct Sign Goku. Yeah, I don't like the fact that they released a brand new figure as an ex event exclusive. That kind of opens up a can of worms for other crap that they can pull. 
not really a fan of that but the figure itself is pretty awesome um it comes with like all the different ha faces like the one where he's closing his eyes and whatnot so that's pretty cool but yeah i feel sorry for those people that couldn't pick this up because it was an event exclusive um but yeah there's that and then these two i didn't even open these to be honest with you it's the recolor of androids uh, who was it 17 and 18 yeah 17 and 18 uh, I already have an Android 17 and 18, and they're perfectly good as they are. So these two, I kind of want to keep in my mint in box collection. So that's what I'm planning on doing. So yeah, if anything, I might open them up and have like their own special uh, display. If, for example, they're going to be releasing um, like Dr. Jero and stuff like that. So if they do, you will see these being displayed as well. All right, let's keep going. So the next set of items are, I guess, re-releases and or figures that I sold off by re-picked up because, man, I recently re-watched Kill La Kill because, um, who was it? I think it was one of my friends who uh, was like, Phil, did you watch Kill La Kill? I was like, no. Well, I mean, yes, but I haven't watched it recently. And he was like, oh, the music in it is pretty freaking wild. So I started by listening to the music. And for those of you guys who watch Kill a Kill, the music's pretty epic. And because I was just listening to like the OST for the anime, I was like, man, it's been a while since I watched this. So I decided to rewatch. Now, the problem I'm facing, guys is the following. I got these two again. But uh, I told you guys in my previous videos that I do have a, young, a very young son, he's five, and my daughter. And so to display a figure that looks like that and that looks like that, I mean, that, I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. This was kind of like an impulse buy because I saw her come back up on pre-order. But I was like, oh my gosh, I really want to display them with my Mako figure that I already have up there. But what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Maybe I should have like a hidden compartment where if I'm by myself, like with my door closed, I, if I want to look at these, I can open that compartment up and there you go. But I don't know. I really don't know what I'm going to do with these. But for now, I have them in my collection because they're awesome. But we'll see. All right. Now, these next set of figures, it's going to be a little bit of a discussion talk. It's, uh, it's none other than... Figma's My Hero Academia line and amazing Yamaguchi My Hero Academia line. Now, I gotta say, I have been collecting Figma's for God knows how long now. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. But, I don't know guys. Uh, the amazing Yamaguchi, first of all, uh, I was kind of iffy on, as you guys know, I picked up the TMNT, the Nickelodeon series turtles. They were pretty awesome figures because they led, their bodies were um, not humanoid figures. So even though it didn't have like, they didn't have necks, it looked fine. But when it came to some other figures, I know they're meant to be displayed like posed, but I just wasn't really a big fan of how gappy they looked how disjointed they looked if it's like superhero pose like vanilla pose but my god um yamaguchi amazing yamaguchi has kicked it up with these my hero academia figures i mean do you guys agree uh, any fans out there of the franchise who's picking up both oh i don't know what to do guys I just saw that they are doing, uh, the Amazing Amaguchi line is doing a Bakugo. And that Bakugo looks freaking dope. Oh my gosh. I, it, like, right now I have the Figma 
Bakugo. And don't get me wrong, it's all right. It's a decent figure. But that amazing Amaguchi one looks like it's gonna, oh, it's gonna just destroy this figure. I love Figma, but for the price point of the Yamaguchi line uh, and the price point of this figure, this line, um, you just get so much more. Yeah, you're. I think you're paying a little bit more with the Yamaguchi line. If yeah, just a tad bit more. But my God, it's just day and night how awesome that they look and. Uh, for those of you guys who can kind of see it, it's right there. I do have my Deku figure displayed, but I want to just talk about this thing right now because this is pretty crazy. This was the figure that Figma released when it came to Deku. And I, I, went, I picked this up and I was just like, man, this is kind of underwhelming. Uh, I just... I don't know. I felt like this was a very weak, weak Deku figure. I purchased the Amazing Yamaguchi, even though I didn't like the, like the disjointed look. I picked it up because I saw how awesome other people said it was. Like I was watching some reviews and they said, oh, this thing is awesome. So I picked it up and sure enough, man, I don't want to pick this one up because it's already fully posed but yeah I mean guys look at that he looks awesome holy crap this guy is freaking amazing look at that and then look at this this essentially looks like a knockoff I mean Figma you're gonna have to step up your game because Amazing Yamaguchi, holy crap. I mean, the uh, the effects on this guy, you have to put it on yourself. But once you do, and you have so many options, so much playability, fun factor. He just looks so cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, if Amazing Yamaguchi, I'm praying, I'm crossing my fingers and I'm praying that they will continue the... My Hero Academia line. If they do so, I am probably going to stop collecting the Figma versions of these guys and just wait for the Amazing Yamaguchi because they're doing something right with the uh, the the My Hero stuff, in, at least in my opinion. Now, the All Might figure is great, but it's weird because when you watch the cartoon or the anime, all Might's one like half of his side is there's always a shadow, but not seeing the shadow on the actual figure, it's just weird. I just don't uh, like. Look, you ready? I can prove it to you. Bam! You kind of see that shadow effect here, but when you look at the actual figure, there is literally no shadow in on the face at all, and that I think is what's kind of driving me insane. But other than that, that All Might figure is. Oh my gosh, it's great. So yeah, there you go. Uh, I did pick up these three, have them di on display. The, what's her name? Um, you're, I can't pronounce her name, but people are gonna, any My Hero fans gonna kill me for it. But yeah, she is awesome. I like her. She, she definitely fits really well with the other guys fully posed and whatnot. Pretty nice. We have, Right here, the Kurishima. He's all right. Uh, I wish they gave us the beast mode version of this guy where he is all rocked out, but they don't. And that's once again, just, I know this is probably because it was like early season two-ish or whatever season it was. And they were just taking it from that, I guess, uh, that version of the character at the time, but still. Um, yeah, it's, it is what it is. Now, something to note about this guy, my figure, unfortunately, the legs are super loose. Like, they just literally will fall off. Uh, I will be getting in touch with Figma, Good Smile Company, and hopefully they can give me a replacement piece because it is terrible. So, there's that. And then, the one that I'm really disappointed about is the Todoroki figure. 
And the reason why is because he is short as hell. Like, if you compare him with uh, the Figma Deku, they're literally about the same size or same height, and that should not be the case. Todoroki should be a little bit taller. And just having them uh, together, it just looks really weird. Uh, I know some people won't care, but for me, when I, uh, like, I watch anime, I watch the show, and when I see that, hey, Deku is supposed to be shorter than him, but they're kind of the same height, and because of, if in some, I guess, if you look at it carefully, because of Deku's hair, in some shots, it looks like Deku's taller, and I just don't like that at all. So, yeah, that's, that's just a minor nitpick there. But if, like I said, if Amazing Yamaguchi continues to pump out these figures, Figma, you got your, you got to get your act together with this because they're going to blow you out of <laughs> the water when it comes to this line. What do you guys think? Do you guys agree with me or maybe you're more on the Figma line? Uh, just leave in the comment section down below because I would love to hear your thoughts on this particular topic. But yeah, that's pretty much it. There's other stuff that I did pick up, but I don't know where I put them. Uh, I took most of them already out of the packaging and just have them displayed. But yeah, if I can find them, I'll showcase those uh, the next in the next haul video. So there you guys have it. So before you guys go, I know this is a long video. Uh, if you guys can do me a favor, once again, let me know what you guys think about this setup. Are you guys okay with it? Or do you guys want them to be separate? Like I said, if you guys uh, uh, want it to be like this, I will put the timestamps in there for you so you guys can watch it at your leisure. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here with me. And while I ramble to myself, by myself, in a room filled with figures. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. And stay tuned. More videos to come. With that said, this is Daybreak 748. I'm signing out. Peace.